Coming up next, the story of one of the first hard rock songs to light up the charts. Some even call it the first heavy metal song. You'll understand why next. Uh, the demo came after his rider test drove his first car. Music in his head dictated it would be a cruising song, but at first it was written as a slow ballad. But the second it was sped up, it became one of the coolest rock songs ever. Then the band got the iconic title from a slogan off of a billboard. After it was recorded, the band was very confident in this song. They were anxious to get it out to radio, but the label, they were pushing for another song to get the coveted A-side. So they actually compromised. They would put both songs on the record, one on each side. Whatever the DJ played, that was gonna be the song. It just so happens that all the DJs chose this hard rock B-side. It flew to the top of the charts. And then it became the voice of a new generation when it was used in one of the first indie movies that blew up the box office back in the day. A classic rock, classic for sure, coming up on Professor of Rock. Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. I tell you what, if you wanna be a part of a premier music community that curates the best of the rock and roll era through interviews, stories, history, everything, subscribe below right now. I think you're really gonna dig this channel. Uh, we've got so many interviews of the legends about the songs that become the soundtrack of your life. We also have a Patreon. Check that out. You're going to find an additional catalog of exclusive content. You can also even become an honorary producer to help us curate this history. And uh, check out our new merch right here, ProfessorRock.com. Today's code to get 10% off is the word vintage. So it's time for another edition of our series, Number One in Our Hearts, where we break down a song that was so great. Should have been a number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100, but for various reasons it came up short. And today we're hitting the open road for the Rockers' premier top speed, no holds barred manifesto, Born to Be Wild by Steppenwolf. Born to be wild. You know, you'd be hard pressed to argue that there was a medium more culturally dominant than music in late 60s America. Uh, television, movies, sports, arts, and literature all opened up society to new ideas. But they also took their cues from popular music. I mean, artists like John Lennon, Bob Dylan, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, all cast political shadows long enough to rival their musical identities. 60s musicians influenced the rising generation in ways that government officials never could. And Steppenwolf was no exception. Steppenwolf's music embodied the era's countercultural, social, political, and philosophical melee. It projected a newfound sense of freedom, freedom to speak your mind, freedom to live how you wanted to live. But before there was Steppenwolf, there was the Sparrows, a Canadian blues rock outfit uh, featuring brothers Dennis and Jerry Edmonton. Uh, though the band went through several lineup changes, they ultimately reconfigured to include singer-songwriter John Kay, bassist Nick St. Nicholas, and keyboardist Goldie McJohn in uh, 65 and 66. The Sparrows played shows all around Southern Ontario, uh, but they weren't making any money, at least not enough to survive. So in an effort to broaden their influence and pay the bills, they began commuting to New York to play clubs there. Soon after, they dropped an S from their name and simply became the Sparrow. Now, after playing for uh, months and months in New York, the Sparrow landed a record deal with Columbia, but after multiple singles failed to chart, the band left New York behind for the California sunshine out west. The Sparrow spent the first six months of 1967 playing gigs between LA and San Francisco. Uh, they performed alongside The Doors and a young Steve Miller band, among many others. <laughs> But by mid-1967, the Sparrows still hadn't locked in a new record deal. And to make matters worse, Dennis Edmonton announced he was leaving to just become a songwriter. Dissensions arose from there, and it was clear that the Sparrow had really run its course. Has come from me and it's me Back in LA, vocalist John Kay's struggles uh, continued even after the band broke up. There wasn't much demand at that moment for a solo blues artist, and he was now newly married and needed financial stability more than ever. 
But in a serendipitous twist of fate, a record producer actually moved into the apartment next door. Uh, his name was Gabriel Meckler, and he worked for ABC Dunhill Records. Now, after getting to know each other, Kay played Meckler some of his stuff, and Meckler was impressed. He encouraged Kay to get the band uh, back together. Now, keyboardist Goldie McJohn and drummer Jerry Edmonton, they both obliged, so that was an easy part. And after placing notices in local record and musical instrument stores, they also recruited guitar prodigy Michael Monarch, and then there was bassist Rushton Morive. With the help of Meckler, the band actually secured a record deal with ABC Dunhill, and the newly assembled group christened themselves Steppenwolf after Herman Hesse's uh, mystical novel of the same name. Now, according to Kay, he was totally unfamiliar with that book at that time. He said, uh, the young man who lived next door to where Steppenwolf started to rehearse had read the book. When it came time to put a, you know, a name on the demo box going to the first label, he said, how about Steppenwolf? I think it's a word that looks really great in print, and it denotes a certain degree of mystery and power, and you guys are kind of rough and ready types. Kay and his bandmates agreed, and that name stuck. Thunder, with the wind. Now, as we get into the song breakdown here, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. These are the glasses that I wear every single day. You know, if you're in the market for a new pair of glasses or sunglasses, check out zenny.com. This is where you can design your own glasses, the shape, the color, the size, and you can add great features like blue blocks and anti-fog, anti-glare. See for yourself today. Yeah, make it happen. So Steppenwolf's 1968 self-titled debut was recorded in a fast four days. The cell started out painfully slow. The first two singles, A Girl I Knew and uh, Suki Suki, both fell flat. Afterwards, an argument ensued between the record company and the band about which song they should put out next. Steppenwolf wanted a song called Born to be Wild. But the label wanted one called Everybody's Next One. In a compromise, both parties agreed to split the difference, putting one song on each side of the single. They then shipped them out to you know, various radio stations to let them fight it out and decide. By early summer of 1968, 90% of radio stations who'd received the record were playing Born to be Wild. It was a massive hit. It accelerated, like I said, to number two on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. It went to number one in Canada. The timing was really perfect. Teenagers across America were out of school. They were hitting the road, you know, looking for adventure and uh, whatever came their way. For adventure and whatever comes our way. Sorry for the pun there, but uh, Born to be Wild became the essential soundtrack for a summer of uninhibited exploration and discovery. Born to be Wild is... Uh, really the, the greatest motorcycle song ever composed. It's been routinely invoked in both popular and counterculture to showcase a biker appearance or attitude. It's a song for anyone who refuses to be tied up in societal straight jacket conventions. Yeah, go make it happen. Born to be Wild was actually written by former Sparrow bandmate Dennis Edmonton, who changed his name to Mars Bonfire when he left the group. Bonfire tells the story of how he was walking down Hollywood Boulevard when he saw a poster in a window saying Born to Ride. The poster featured a picture of a motorcycle erupting out of the earth like a volcano with all this fire around it. You know, chunks of asphalt were flying everywhere. It was the ultimate bike from hell scene. And for the young songwriter, it was destiny calling. I said Bonfire, around this time, I had just purchased my first car, a little second-hand Ford Falcon. So all this came together lyrically. The idea of the motorcycle coming out along with the freedom and joy I felt in having my first car and being able to drive myself around whenever I wanted. After Bonfire finished the demo, he passed it off to his brother Jerry, and he told him, I wrote this new tune. You guys are starting a band. Would you consider it? Yeah. 
The Steppenwolf crew listened to it, and uh, although it was written in a somewhat subdued, semi-ballad manner, they did hear potential in it. It didn't take them long to upgrade Bonfire's laid-back demo into the hard-hitting Steppenwolf classic we all know and love. The track became a No Limits epic open road anthem that inspires us all to chase after freedom and to look for adventure just over the horizon. As the song opens up, the first verse puts us right in the gear. Head out on the highway. Get your motor running, head out on the highway, looking for adventure and whatever comes our way. I mean, one of the greatest first lines ever. Hearing these words coaxes us to leave behind our day-to-day -day tedium and cast off the societal expectations that really weigh us down. By the time we reach the next few lines, we're amped up and ready to take on the world. Yeah, darling, go make it happen. Take the world in a love embrace. Fire all your guns at once and explode into space. Born to be Wild has been described as a seminal work for heavy metal, that genre. And that's because it features the first known use of the term heavy metal in music. Heavy metal thunder. Now, there are a few songs that experts point out to as the first heavy metal song. I mean, everything from You Really Got Me by the Kinks. To Helter Skelter by the Beatles. There's Sunshine of Your Love by Cream. The light shining through on you. And Gata De Vida by Iron Butterfly. Black Sabbath by Black Sabbath. Oh, and a few others. But the only one of said songs that uh, has the word heavy metal in it is Steppenwolf. As for what's the first heavy metal song, I mean, I'll let you come up uh, with your own conclusions on that one. As the second verse continues the rallying cry for freedom with the lyrics, I like smoke and lightning, heavy metal thunder, racing with the wind and the feeling that I'm under. Now, of course, Born to be Wild was featured prominently in the 1969 road film, Easy Rider a movie produced by Peter Fonda and directed by Dennis Hopper. Uh, they also played the two starring roles. A couple of freewheeling hippies named Wyatt and Billy. Those are references to Wyatt Earp and Billy the Kid. After completing a profitable drug deal in Southern California, the duo set out on a cross-country road trip to New Orleans. It's the story of a man who went looking for America and couldn't find it anywhere. Hoping to get there in time for Mardi Gras, they sprint through America's heartland on custom-made Harley-Davidson choppers. As Wyatt and Billy uh, ride on, crossing an endless expanse of road, they search for freedom, enlightenment, and the meaning of America. They also meet up with Jack Nicholson. Uh, I, I gotta get out of here, man. Co-starring Jack Nicholson. For better or worse, they encounter a diverse array of people, some sympathetic to their nonconformist ideals, many others who are just downright hostile. The pair come face to face with bigotry and violence from small town communities who see these hippie bikers as a threat to their own ideals. Without giving away any spoilers, I'll just say that this counterculture odyssey across America doesn't end up as planned. Now, the release of Easy Rider marked a significant milestone in American filmmaking. It was a low-budget affair, wholly independent from the typical Hollywood offering, but it touched a nerve with audiences, both young and old, and for vastly different reasons. There was a deep-seated division growing in America at that time that uh, has just continued to grow that chasm. Hell of a good country. I don't understand what's going on with it. Generational values were coming into sharp conflict. Easy Rider brought this conflict to the forefront by addressing topics that a lot of people didn't want to talk about. Alternative lifestyles, drug use, alcoholism, and sex without limits. 
And Born to be Wild was at the heart of all of that. It was featured in one of the most iconic scenes from that era and has the distinction of playing against the opening credits of the film. You know, after Wyatt throws his watch into the dirt and accelerates down the road, the music all of a sudden hits and you're catapulted into an explosive, high energy montage of the road. motorcycles and American West scenery. In fact, it was conceived by Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper as a modern Western with Harleys replacing horses. That iconic scene with Steppenwolf in the background as Captain America and Billy flash across the screen, it's tattooed on the baby boomer experience forever. Even the generations that followed, that inspired soundtrack and scenic ride gets your blood pumping and your aspirations soaring. It just absolutely hooks you from the get-go. Watching Wyatt and Billy cruising down the highway, it just it makes us want the same thrilling experience and whether or not you've ever ridden a motorcycle or even planned to. The feeling that comes from this voyage into self-determination, it's infectious. Born to be wild. And you wanna do the same in your own life, whatever that you know, may look like. I think that all of us are driven to embrace freedom and discovery in our lives. It's a call that none of us can resist. Together, the song and that scene from that movie, it just solidified Steppenwolf's status as counterculture icons. Uh, and their next song became another seismic hit, Magic Carpet Ride. Great song. Born to be Wild was the band's third single off their 1968 debut album, Steppenwolf. Without a doubt, it was their uh, catalyst to break through to the masses. It became their most successful single, it reached number two, like I said, on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. It was also certified gold in the U.S. and not surprising at all. Uh, it uh, did really well internationally. It broke the top 20 in Austria, Germany, New Zealand, and the U.K. Also, again, number one in Canada. Born to be Wild has also appeared in a near endless list of films and TV shows. There was uh, Knight Rider, One Crazy Summer, Miami Vice, Family Ties, Wonder Years. Doogie Howser, MD, Home Improvement. Speechless, King of Queens, The Simpsons a couple times. Born to be wild. Herbie Foley Loaded, My Name is Earl. Head out on the highway. Heartland and uh, Paddington, Supernatural. Born to be Wild has also been covered by several artists, including Wilson Pickett, that was in 69, Blue Easter Colt in 75. Born to be wild. Born to be wild. Yeah. In Excess, 93, Ozzy Osbourne and Miss Piggy. Tim Buck 3, Slayer, Kim Wilde. Aerosmith and Carrie Underwood just recently. Now, it was held out of the number one spot by the Rascals, People Gotta Be Free, which would spend over a month at the top of the charts. It's kind of funny that it kept Born to Be Wild out of the number one position because the Rascals song is all about voicing the fact that we all need to be free. Born to be Wild is all about what that wondrous emotion feels like. Born to be wild. Leave us a comment about Steppenwolf and Born to be Wild. What, what are your memories of this song? Let us know in the comments below. If you like our content, I'd invite you to be a full-time part of our channel uh, by subscribing below. We'd love to have you. And uh, until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Talk to you soon.